Very interesting show tonight. Dr. Bernard Haish is uh, coming up next. I've been reading from his resume over the last hour or so. <laughs> and honestly, I don't even begin to do the guy justice. Uh, born in Stuttgart, uh, PhD here in America. Uh, used to be the uh, deputy director for the Center for, Mex- for Extreme Ultraviolet Astrophysics at the uh, University of California in Berkeley. Visiting scientist at the Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics in Germany. And that's just where we'll pick it up, coming up next, with that extraterrestrial spin to it. On Coast to Coast AM, this is Ian Punnett. Well, unlike a lot of astrophysicists, perhaps out there, uh, Dr. Bernard Haish is always willing to enter into conversations on the fringe. So before we get to the book, The God Theory, and other things, let's let's start there. Dr. Haish, do you mind? You're just fine. Uh, uh, first of all, I read a quote from your ufoskeptic.org website, and I love this quote. Advances are made by answering questions. Discoveries are made by questioning answers. I think that's kind of the theme of this show. I think that's a really brilliant way of summing it up. So let me just ask you about this. So about an hour ago, we, we linked up a story on our webpage and, and talked about um, videotape of lights dancing around the sky in Lake uh, Liberty Lake, Washington, uh, several families seeing the same thing, lights turning colors, f- flying around. Y- Air Force says it's not us. Nobody has an explanation for that. Uh, as an astrophysicist, somebody who, who spends a lot of time with light color in the sky, what do you think about that? Well, I was actually called by Fox News on that a couple of weeks ago, and uh, they sent a cameraman out to uh, and a film crew out to talk to me about this. They showed me the video they'd taken, and I saw them as just satellites. I mean, the, the motion with respect to the stars, the rate of travel, probably the time of night that they were taken. Uh, what I was shown was simply satellites. I can't comment on anything other than that. Well, that's fair enough. Uh, it didn't look like that to me. It looked like they, it looked like they, they were jutting around at different angles. I don't know. The, I'm assuming we saw the same video, but it, it, it looked like there were some distinct angles that were taken, and you're just saying that's just kind of a trick of where we're standing with the in respect to the satellites passing overhead? Well, it looked to me as if the camera was bouncing around. I was trying to look at where the object was with respect to the stars, and the whole thing was bouncing around quite a bit because it's very difficult to photograph something that way at night. And so what I saw was definitely moving pretty uniformly with respect to the stars. Now, we may have been looking at different things, but the video I saw was pretty certainly satellite. Okay, well, fair enough. So as a, as a skeptic, as a UFO skeptic, What's the best evidence that you think you have seen that suggests that there is something that we can't explain that is within our within our view as human beings on this earth that may not be of an earthly origin? Well, that's a tough question, of course. I think the thing that intrigues me most is that I know some of the people in the field. I've worked for many years through the, with the Society for Scientific Exploration. Uh, in fact, I was the editor of the Journal of Scientific Exploration, which is a great journal. I'd encourage readers to find out about it, but it's going to jse.com. Um, so I edited the journal, and in that capacity, I got to know lots of people in the field. And some of them are pretty crazy, and some of them were really, really solid people that had good evidence. So I can't really think of any specific case that, uh, that uh, came across my desk. In fact, we had several that were sort of debunking cases. In one case, um, we had uh, an Oregon road sign. It's pretty definitely the, the cause of a classic UFO photograph, a UFO that uh, you have a photograph that was taken from a car that was actually uh, an Oregon road sign that was uh, blurred by the motion. But we came across some pretty good stuff, too. But I can't think of any specific, um, any specific episode or any specific incident that really, uh, that really, really you know, made a difference in my level of belief. Uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, what, where would you put your level of belief? Well, let's put it this way. Take, take away the word belief and substitute okay. something a little more scientific. I'd say probably around a seven or eight. There's, there's probably something going on here. Uh, okay. What other word in in light of the lack of evidence um, and and the the fact that we don't have scientific proof yet, or at least something that ri- that rises to the level of scientific proof? I, aren't we all that we? Isn't all that we are left with is belief? Well, I just I'm I'm very skittish about the word belief because. That takes us back into the God theory and the whole question of religion and spirituality. Belief has gotten us into a lot of trouble. And so the word is <laughs> it's just kind of one of those words that sets me off as a scientist. 
Okay. All right. Uh, fair enough. Well, I'll put aside that word for now. And then, and since you've opened the door on that, let's go with the God theory. This is your book from a couple of years ago. How has this been received by other scientists? You know, I don't honestly know how, how other scientists look at this because I, I don't talk about it when I go to scientific conferences. It's one of those things that, you know, it's uh, best left undiscussed at the scientific meeting. So to be honest, I have not gotten much feedback from other scientists. Now, I have written a second book, and uh, it's on the same topic. It goes into a bit more depth. And I've gotten half a dozen endorsements from some pretty prominent astrophysicists that I know that really seem to like it. So, you know, in sort of an indirect way, I think that's, that indicates that there's some people out there in the science field that would regard what I've written as, you know, pretty good. But overall, I would say most would probably view it skeptically if I were to bring up the topic. So I try not to bring it up. Uh, okay. Well, that, that I guess in a way it, that disappoints me, not about you, but about the, the field of science. I mean, I, I know, for example, from my own work that um, several times I've worked with people who are psychiatrists, and they never mention the fact that they are people of faith around other psychiatrists who tend to be um, more agnostic or, if not atheistic, and sometimes even uh, antagonistically atheistic, and so they just have gotten to the point where they never talk about faith, uh, which seems an odd sort of thing to walk away from uh, around people who are scientists. That if if we are if we are to be if we're to think about scientists, people think I think that scientists are pretty smart people and that they can hold all sorts of contrary views in their mind at the same time and not have to rule something out or ever get. I don't know, uh, a bad attitude about something like religion. Well, you know, it kind of depends on what, what sort of God you're talking about. And I think this is one of the, the causes of the conflict between science and spirituality, that there's, there's some beliefs about God that simply make no sense, and that sets scientists off and really irritates scientists when people talk about them, because they, they don't make sense. We can get into this more during the show, but I think okay. there's a, that there is a conception of God that's perfectly compatible with everything we know in science, a view of God that is perfectly compatible with the Big Bang. It's perfectly compatible with an ancient Earth, 4.6 billion year old Earth, and more specifically, a view of God that's totally consistent with evolution. In fact, a view of God that requires evolution. That's what I try to write about in the book. And so that's the kind of God that I think scientists would be interested in. It's the kind of God that uh, simply doesn't seem rational that sets scientists off and makes them say, well, I'm an atheist. You know, certain kinds of God would make me an atheist, too. You have to right. be an atheist against a certain kind of God, and there are certainly God images that, that would make me an atheist. Uh, right, and uh, I understand that. And the idea, though, that if, if we're proposing that scientific outlook, uh, I, I'd like to hear more scientists as they read your work. Let me let me let me pull back a little bit on the lens, though, on this. Uh, when you talk about the God theory, um, and you you talk about your original inspiration for this, um, what were you attempting? What did you set out to do by developing the God theory? Well, I wanted to come up with a, a view of God that made sense to me, and it was something that I could defend logically, something that was rational, that didn't violate any laws of physics, and better than that would be uh, uh, accommodating to what we know in science, one that I could proudly you know, say is something that as a scientist I can point to uh, and say, yes, this is something that I think is rational and possible. So I wanted to come up with a, a view of God and a reason that we might be here asking these questions about God that would be rational, reasonable, sensible, and something I can be proud of to put forth. Uh, am I wrong in detecting that you're going out of your way to not use the word believe in? To not say believe in? <laughs> I guess having given you a hard time about it a few minutes ago, I should. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like you're trying to avoid saying a God you can believe in. I suppose a God you can believe in, yeah. I mean, I, I've got to say, I, I think I believe in the God that I wrote about. In fact, I, I do believe in the God I wrote about. But of course, a tiny, tiny bit of wiggle room to say, well, you never know. Right. Well, fair enough. And and perhaps I, I think that I think every person of faith should always leave open that possibility that whatever they believe, they won't ultimately know. They can't ultimately know because we're not God and we can't know if we if we could understand all of the depth and breadth of the divine, then we would be bigger than the divine, at least in my view. But so what, but tell me about then explain for people who don't know what the God theory is. Right. Well, let's go back to something that Steven Weinberg said, oh, probably 20 years ago. Steven Weinberg is a very famous physicist and also a very famous atheist, a Nobel laureate, too, by the way. And about 20, maybe even 30 years ago, he said, the more the universe seems comprehensible, the more it also seems pointless. 
Now, that to me is a, a pretty negative statement, about as negative as you can get with respect to the meaning of life and our purpose here in this, uh, in this earth. Now, it seems to me, though, that the